Today we focus on a concept called Gordon Johnson making you money through the back door is the focus of our conversation today. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. We also want to thank our Patreon supporters. Your support is greatly appreciated. It makes a big difference in viability uh, of the channel. We also want to encourage you to like and subscribe, and this is a copyrighted broadcast. So I had a chance to do an interview with Gordon Johnson a few months ago, and um, he made several points about Tesla that I thought uh, reflected the fact that he generally looks for the negative on Tesla and then tries to bake that in. So my goal today was to review first his analysis and then look at why it is that um, Gordon is going to be forced into a zone that's called capitulation and why that is an excellent way for you to make money. So what capitulation would be about in this case is the fact that in the case of GM and Ford and all these other companies, like 90% of the analysts are all positive on the stock. So as a result, those companies get the full benefit of all of that stock positivity. The problem, though, is that in, is that in Tesla's case, the, the trend is we have Gordon Johnson at the bottom with a $150 price target, and then you have several firms, at least a third of the firms that uh, do research on Tesla, have it below $500 a share, and the remainder of them are way above where the stock price currently is. So when you have a distribution of uh, analyst reports across a range like this, you end up with this situation where um, it's hard to, um, well, the, the stock will get the benefit of the doubt, um, if, if uh, higher than 50% of the analysts are positive. But if all of the analysts are positive, then most of the increasing value of the stock is kind of baked into it. Hence why I believe Gordon Johnson and his, his ilk give Tesla a nice push. So we basically had sort of four points that uh, Gordon Johnson made when it came to Tesla that I'm gonna go through and analyze for how we arrive at capitulation. The first of the four is that Gordon Johnson pointed out that he believed Tesla was gonna see a severe drop in stock price driven by the fact that um, the cost related to the Chinese operations was not fully baked into the stock price. So basically, he was anticipating that, um, yes, there's revenue generated there and there's profit, but when you deduct the cost of building that facility out, you all of a sudden end up with a lower profit number, which changes all the metrics on Tesla. I then asked him if during the, uh, the last earning calls of, of 2021, if he had noted that the CFO had pointed out that they made a $1.5 billion payment to the Chinese bank slash government to cover the cost of the factory, and therefore there wasn't that number anymore. So his response was, oh, I didn't realize that. Where did you get that from? So this is the first of the four of, uh, I wanna say capitulation elements when it comes to Tesla. The second item that uh, Gordon covered, there was a potential sort of issue for, for Elon and company, and that I think is sort of the biggest sort of capitulation number is Gordon made the comment that, well, wait a second, there, the number of vehicles and the growth rate required to maintain Tesla stock price was not viable the way the numbers were growing. So what he pointed out, and I would have to agree for last year, that the difference between, let's say, the the uh, October number, let's say, and the number of vehicles that came, let's say, at the end of the year that was reported in January was about 40,000 vehicles. The growth rate, if you look at it um, on a quarterly basis, was about 40K vehicles. So Gordon then pointed out that Elon admitted that they'd be producing about 1,000 vehicles a week 
from both new factories and that it added up to so few vehicles that there was no way that Tesla was going to be able to meet the two to three million vehicles required to push the stock price higher than it currently was. So I thought this was interesting and kind of where I see uh, Gordon's capitulation coming from because we've already, Elon indicated that they're actually producing in Austin, even though the vehicles haven't been fully approved by the government. He also pointed out that he's in production in uh, Germany as well. So where I see an inbound capitulation is the fact that if you have on the 22nd deliveries begin and then there's a systematic deliveries uh, that are coming out of Germany, the, the minimum of break even on, on a daily basis for that plant is a thousand vehicles. The, 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 therefore, something in that 2000 vehicle uh, per day range is a routine production for that facility. So you can extrapolate what those numbers might look like over time. Both factories are kind of built for at least 1.5 million vehicles once they're able to produce, but more like two to two and a half million vehicles per factory once they're at full bore. So will that happen immediately? No, there are some battery and semiconductor challenges, but we're definitely going to see at or above break-even numbers coming out of those facilities. And there's no way that you could keep the facility open with only 1,000 vehicles being produced a week. In that circumstance, you might as well just ship those vehicles from either Fremont or China and be done with it, which is not going to occur. So therefore, we're at or above break-even, and this gives us, let's call it a 1,000 a day, um, six-day operations or five-day operations, five to 6,000 a week times five, 25K, times three months per quarter. So now we're at, call it 75,000 vehicles per quarter times two facilities. That's 150,000 extra vehicles. Now um, that's on a quarterly basis, obviously, and multiply that by that four. So what this is easily suggesting is Tesla smashes past, you know, China alone is a million vehicles. So what we're chasing right now is a two million to two and a half million vehicle uh, year on the low side, but possibly a three million vehicle a year. So if in theory we go back and we look at the fact that uh, this year was about a, a million vehicles produced for 2021, China alone is gonna do a million this year and then add in at least another million between all th two extra factories plus Fremont, we now have an interesting situation, which is if in fact Tesla's stock price currently, call it 800 bucks, equals a million vehicles a year, when you're at two, <clears throat> possibly 2.5 million vehicles on the low side, but maybe 3 million on the high, a tripling of the amount of production is going to sort of justify somewhere between a 1.5 or $1,500 share perhaps 2,000 a share for the stock. And once the analysts start to see the numbers that reflect arriving at this level, that's when we're gonna see the stock accelerating. So it's my belief then that um, we're gonna get the 22nd and some movement once Germany starts delivering vehicles, then we're gonna start getting um, another push on the stock price delivered once Austin starts producing and delivering those vehicles are well. They're already producing, but they're not delivering. So if we're at the two to three million a vehicle a, a year vehicle circumstance, I think it's pretty clear where we're at in terms of what's going to happen with the stock price. And so <clears throat> why I brought Gordon Johnson up in this case was if you go back and look through his arguments against Tesla, the answer he's been given or giving is the, the growth numbers are not there to support the, the rapid acceleration of the stock price and going from 1 million to 2 to 3 million, a doubling, almost tripling in one year is going to definitely make the case. And as we head towards 25, when China is scheduled to produce 4 million vehicles and sell them, as you can see, 
uh, Tesla's numbers get very large, and those very large numbers, all of the analysts are going to have to redo their numbers, which I think is exciting. And as soon as we see scale production, which I think happens in the next month or so, coming out of both free, free, uh, both Austin and the Gigafactory, I believe that the stock price is going to go bananas. Now, is could this slow down or be impacted by uh, the war in Poland? Absolutely. But I believe that we're set up right now for some really exciting times for the stock for the reason I just described. So there's uh, one last thing I wanted to cover today is there's a guy named Steve Wesley who's a Stanford alum and a venture capitalist in Silicon Valley and a, a friend actually. And he recently did a show with Rob <clears throat> where he discussed uh, the fact that his fund had done very well, Tesla being the biggest reason why they made money in the EV space and others didn't. And I thought it was really interesting because one of the things we've been doing on our show is, for example, men mentioning Syrah, S-Y-R-A-H. That's not pronounced correctly, but it's an Australian company that has a four-year deal with Tesla to provide uh, uh, raw materials for its batteries at scale after they open a new factory. And so what Steve has been doing is identifying how the future looks as we make changes in the electricity space and how to invest in that and make money in the process. And so <clears throat> we've covered, if you look it up, the duck curve. So what that's about is that it's better for companies to use the solar panels on people's homes as part of the electric grid. But the problem that they're having is they need <clears throat> mega packs on grid scale from Tesla to sort of feed that situation because um, it turns out that when the duck curve occurs, so the sun after 2 p.m. starts to go down, providing less electricity from those solar panels on people's homes. So <clears throat> the, the problem <clears throat> we run into is that if in fact you have less power from so solar heading into evening heavy usage by individuals, you now need the Tesla mega packs to fill that gap because there isn't enough time to bring a coal-fired or fuel-fired uh, turbines on to provide the power that you need at people's homes and there's no sunlight at those hours to provide it. So what's happening is there's an investment opportunity, be it Tesla, Cattle, um, LG, all these different companies that are servicing the EV future is kind of a big deal. So I think the investment plan he has in mind is excellent. It's forcing uh, utilities and others to change how they do business, given how solar panels impact them. And investing in that space, you're already doing so with your Tesla investments, is sort of what the future looks like, where it's going. And uh, it's already been profitable relative to Tesla. But as Tesla's energy muscles are being flexed, uh, we end up now with this uh, terrific situation where Tesla's core competencies in battery and grid scale uh, installations for utilities, you know, is the future and becomes terrific in terms of how it hits the stock, et cetera. So uh, a lot of exciting uh, news for Tesla on many fronts as described. So at um, any rate, I do believe Gordon is going to have to capitulate because there's no way to hide if you have Tesla triple sales in one year and then go for continued doubles or triples. Um, I just think that there's going to be hard pressed for any of those guys to win with their negativism when it comes to Tesla as this plays out. So um, I, uh, I appreciate your taking time out for the view today. Uh, it's finally time to make some money off of Gordon Johnson because uh, his negativity is going to be your profitable move when it comes to the stock. And so I just want to say congratulations and let's get this production started in Germany as discussed. One last note I wanted to make on Germany is that I really think that they're going to find some way to delay this thing again beyond the 22nd 
because there was that 400 uh, item list that was given that they have to get through before they can do those uh, deliveries. So let's keep our fingers crossed because they have some very powerful and wealthy entities that they're competing with that have the ability to slow things down if they choose to with court or other methods. So let's, you know, think positive in this space as well. At any rate, we do have some SpaceX shares if there's interest. This is Greg for t uh, Tesla Fan Insight. Our health tip for today is uh, consider the 80 milligrams on a daily basis of uh, sort of kids aspirin as a way to reduce blood pressure. Also, we have a list of other health tips below. If you have ideas that we should add to that list, would be greatly appreciated. At any rate, uh, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, German, au revoir, French, Le Heathrow, Hebrew, Hoba, Hoda, Hafez, Farsi, Strajice, Russian, Nihama, Chinese, Asante, Swahili, um, uh, Heido, Swedish, uh, Namaste, Hindi, and in Jamaica, we say enough respect, walk good, man. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day, and bye for now.